Chapter 9 Spiritual Vacuum Faith When we think of faith, we often think about something we need to happen in the future or look for a positive and rewarding outcome. When we have faith, it reveals the presence of hope in times of storms. Faith also allows us to believe that change and encouragement will happen if we keep believing and hoping that our help or salvation will come. I remember reading a quote from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that inspired me to understand the process of faith when it said, Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. This quote was so important to me because it answered how I felt about my faith. There have been instances when I found myself taking the first step in faith to start a project or plan I believed God wanted me to do. I would often have initial thought and belief that it can be accomplished in the way that it was perceived and planned. However, I would often find myself plowing to the end of the project without actually understanding the journey or intricacies it may take to finish the project. I had faith in the action and not the process. It was understood that if I believed it could be done, it would be completed just by my desire and belief in the beginning and end. The beginning of our faith in something helps us believe it can be accomplished. Still, the journey to completion reveals the strengthening portion of our faith when we see the smallest detail fit and join together to make the larger piece of the process fall into place. The Bible calls this process the substance of things hoped for, meaning We are applying the materials needed to build our confidence and trust that everything will work out according to the greater plan. Key elements such as trust and confidence must be embraced with faith when we cannot see, touch, or feel with our natural mind. It takes faith to have confidence and trust that our lives are not predestined to have such trauma or pain associated with it. Therefore, believing that trauma and pain were predestined in our lives would leave us hopeless and in despair with the thought that everything we've encountered negatively was all part of life's journey. There is a scripture that tells us that God has a plan for us to give us a hope and a future. What faith means prior to experience a vacuum effect is that you will continue to seek help and safety when everything around appears to be imploding. You will continue to the glass half full instead of half empty. Ultimately, you must believe and have faith that there is a God in heaven who loves you and cares about you enough to send words of hope and the future, as Paul tells the people of his day to be encouraged by knowing these facts that they can see, feel, and touch. As he said, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down but not destroyed, always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. That's found in 2 Corinthians 4th chapter, the 8th through the 10th verse. Faith is sharpened in many ways. To name a few, please direct your attention to the first way that faith is sharpened. When we believe and trust that something will come to pass, and it does, we feel as if the universe has smiled on us, blessed us with something we really needed, and silently prayed, pleaded for change and action. Experiencing your thoughts and requests becomes a reality that builds your faith in believing that there is hope. 
Another way that we are sharpening our faith is when we continue to seek God's answer and he hears us and sees our actions of faith and reveals our answers to us in a way that we never expected. The answer is far greater than what we imagine and we see that there is a God that hears and answers our prayers. The person who expressed faith in that moment, they can tell others how God responded to their prayers and there was direct and undisputed change. Faith reveals itself as evidence of things that we hope for. And it is also evidence of things that we cannot see. How profound is that statement, which essentially tells us that there is hope at the core level of our belief system. It is hope that keeps every person who profess to have faith in a higher calling, belief, entity, or self that something is going to happen to make our lives better. When we attend our faith systems, what is the hope we seek to fulfill when we journey or ascribe to that particular thing? We hope to feel relief, peace, comfort, joy, and strength when we become hopeful in a better direction or feeling to the current journey in our lives. This is why we attend conferences, workshops, meetings, and worship services. It is the hope and the faith that we will hear, see, or be a part of something that brings enlightening peace. Things not readily seen or witnessed, but anticipated, stir up greater expectations of faith for the better and a brighter hope for the future. Over the centuries, humanity has searched for the answer to the hereafter. Many cultures believe that there is life after death, And we are put on earth to fulfill a purpose or destiny planned out for us when we were created. Our purpose and destiny have a measure of faith assigned to it. However, how we use that faith to keep us going is entirely our choice. The choice is vital to have as we look to our future. Consequently, our choice to have faith in God is paramount in this season. Our season means the times that we encounter something. However, when our prayers go unanswered and our situations worsen, can we still find peace and faith in God? Or does this start a vacuum effect? Many who have experienced prayers unanswered create a vacuum of faith because the person slowly begins to doubt God's ability to meet their needs and protect them. The vacuum effect of unanswered prayer starts the vacuum of faith, whereas the willingness to pray in faith becomes less and less. The desire to have hope turns into hopelessness, and the vacuum of faith is established in the mind and heart of a person. It is important to identify when the thoughts of hopelessness begin to overcome our ability to have faith and seek counsel for help from someone with whom you spiritually confide about the lack of faith. If you have a person who you feel has the fruits of the Spirit, you see they are strong believers in God, reach out to them and request to talk to them. The vacuum of faith, regardless of your religious or personal belief, spreads and become all-consuming. The vacuum of faith expands to so many areas of your life. When we no longer have the substance of things hoped for, we feel empty and void of emotion and purpose. This allows that free space to become filled with negativity about God, faith, the church, and ultimately Jesus. The path to unbelief and anger begins to grow in your heart because you feel duped into thinking 
that you wasted your time believing in something pointless and meaningless. You began to think and feel that you control your destiny and your purpose can be inspired by other people who you find out are scarred and abused. Thus, you begin a cycle of abuse and bondage. This is not God's plan for your purpose of, for living. Bad things happen to great people, and the ability to be shielded from trauma is almost impossible. Impossibility does not mean hopeless. It just means impossible does not mean it is never. Hope, regardless of your choice to believe in a spiritual relationship with a higher power, or if you choose not to believe in anything, Please take the chance to research the positiveness of faith and the advantages of hope in your life. It is hard to see hope in hopeless situations, but it is there. There are many books available to provide information regarding hope. There are hundreds of programs and services that offer hope. There are hundreds of people who will cross your path that will try to give you hope. The question will be, can you find hope and accept hope long enough to escape the vacuum that you are in? It takes faith to believe when everything else has failed that a breakthrough of salvation and an answer to all of your questions is coming soon. A verse in the Bible talks about the person who was at a point of losing hope. He was at a point of rejecting all hope in a brighter day and a day of peace and happiness. This person was a king named David who felt so forsaken because his enemies were constantly attacking him and his circumstances were so bad. He felt hopeless and discouraged, but he suddenly remembered all of the good times and days that God was there and how God blessed him when he should have been killed or starved and punished. But this is what he realized. In the midst of his worst days, God still loved him and showed him love and mercy to protect him from his death. King David says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That's found in Psalms, the 27th chapter, 13th and the 14th verse. If the king of Israel can almost lose hope when his God previously proved that he was loved and his needs and protections were always being met until this point, It is safe to say that we will endure hard times and our faith will be pushed to the limit. It is essential to take the historical value of the glass being half full with us through our struggle and storm because there is a lesson learned in our reflection and pain. Grace is always letting us know that our situation could be worse And we could have been ultimately killed and no longer have had a chance to see and experience God's goodness in our lives. The vacuum of faith can be filled. Your faith can be restored and the void of unbelief can be restored. Anyone experiencing the vacuum of faith must keep trying to find a reason to hope and love again. The negative people who have hurt or abused you in your past or presence are vessels of a vacuum themselves who have never been filled or healed. Understanding that they are broken and living in a vacuum of love and faith may help you find a way to connect to the unbrokenness of who they are long enough to find a way to be saved and save those around you. Finally, there is a verse that may be a source of encouragement to someone reading this. The verse is very simple and concise in its context and meaning. It reads plainly and tells us that God desires you to believe 
in him and trust him because he loves you. Evil things are happening to you, resulting from the hearts of a broken and fallen creation. It is God's will that no one should die or be broken, but repentance from the character of our birth and how our conscience was shaped once we were born into the world. King David said, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. This found in Psalms 51st chapter, the 5th verse. The writer of this book also would like for everyone to know, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It's found in Hebrews 11 chapter 6 verse.